Welcome to episode 247 of the Muck Podcast. Listen in as we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. I'm Tina Hadamia. And I'm Hillary Dougherty. Welcome. It's well, Monday. Surprise. It's, hi. <laughs> yeah. It's not an October surprise. It's a November surprise. <laughs> Who knew it would be yeah. coming from us, but here yeah, we are. Here, here we, we are. are. Here we are. And this could very well be our last episode. Well, here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, whatever comes after this will be the last one. Like, right. I think we need to do one more to wrap it up. But, yeah, we've said for a while that if Trump wins, this will be the end. And it's, I was thinking this week that um, it's not because we're, like, throwing in the towel and, like, it's literally no. to save our own mental health. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, I, that's literally what it is to be able to go and breathe every week yeah. because we will continue to follow the news and be be active in, in what's happening here in Broward and Florida and we'll continue to do the work but to sit here every week it's um it's I don't know we I take it very it. personally yeah. it's 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 really it's a really involved thing in our lives to follow it I but then to sit down and which is painful it. it's yeah. painful to live in Florida and to do that as a democrat but then to sit down and to discuss it and to put it out there um, it's it's incredibly was, frustrating I, I and hard to do everything. I was back on the last Trump presidency, mm. and it it just all of the things that were so horrible and upsetting, and how how we all felt. I, I don't I don't know if I I can't do it again. I can't, and I can't. I feel like I can't do this every four years. That every four years that yeah, we're in this it's life so, or it's death dire straits, like mm. it shouldn't be like this with politics. Like we should not be afraid of losing our democracy and our freedoms every four years. Like that's not. I never felt like this before. I've said that a million times on this podcast, but it's just different now. Yeah, things are different now, and. I don't know. So well, so what I was thinking about this week, and I told you, and I was going to say this at the end of the podcast, but I'll say it now: that half the country doesn't do any of this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they don't they, even come out. They're and vote. quiet. They they're living their best lives. They don't vote. They don't know what's going on. And there's a big part of me that goes, "That sounds nice. I can do that. Yeah, but I can do this. Can you imagine <laughs> can you do this? What that's like?" I, I can't, I can't, I can't either, but that your your head is in the sand and you're going about your everyday and you don't realize that the, maybe the hardships that you're facing are because of policies and things that have impacted you, but you're not taking the initiative to think about why maybe yeah. things in your life are the way they are, or I, I don't know, or maybe you're just rich and safe and none of this matters to you. Right. And, and you know, hey, lucky you, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> like, I just don't understand people who navigate through the world without any thought to how the world works to what's happening to the fellow people around you right like I, yes that's the part that bothers that, me that that's, like, that's the part i don't get it i don't either unless just, you're so steeped in your own troubles and then i get it like you have so much going on that you you there's no space for it right but i don't think that's the case for everyone it, it can't be it can't be but there's a you know there's a rapper named um, Sexy Red I guess her name's Sexy Red hey. and um, she put a tweet out yesterday she had been saying she was gonna vote for Trump like over the summer and people were like what the fuck she's a black woman for, I think from North Carolina and uh, it's very sexual raps <laughs> my daughter and I were talking about this morning. my neck my back remember my that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course I remember girl. hello I'm from South Florida bitch. oh my god oh, Tootsie Roll Tootsie Roll okay um. But she put out a tweet yesterday, and it was my favorite, like, support for Kamala, and I put it up in our stories on oh, Instagram, I saw it, but it yes. says, I just voted with all these exclamation points. Don't tell us what to do with our coochies! That's Kamala right. for president. And I was like, go. that's enough for me. That's it. That's enough for me. Let's do it. Don't tell me what to do with my coochie! I don't want anything to do with that! <laughs> No. That should be the title. Of this yes. <laughs> We're going out with a bang, bitch. Yes. Um, but I think that that that's it. And at the end of this, I'll talk about how I feel about all of it and where we stand. Tina called me this week and I, she was 
in despair. And I, I was, was like, girl, this is, how, this is how we're going to be living from now on. I'm going to tell you all about it at the end. But I think it's a good way to move forward. But we're putting this out on Monday right. because usually our podcast comes out on Wednesday. Obviously, the election is November 5th this, uh, tomorrow. And I thought, how are we going to talk on this podcast yeah. about everything happening a day after it's going to come out the day after the election. So let's do a final push on Monday. Talk about what happened this week, but then also talk about how important it is yes. to vote, the differences between these two candidates, yes. as if our listeners don't know already. But, you um, know, restate it, share it. We're here. Share it with people. And like, if whatever, people don't know, like, hey, yeah. here's some... Here's some amendment. issues that are important. Obviously, yeah. you know what ours are, because we live in Florida, and we're, yeah. we, you know, we got Amendment 4 on the ballot here, and that's a big, that's a big reason for us. Uh, our coochies. Yeah. Our coochies, people. people. <laughs> so, what do you want to start the, with? The you want to start... Coochie. Do you want to start with this awful... I mean, obviously now it's a week old, but the Madison Square Garden rally with Trump this week, it was it was it was a cringe fest for sure. I mean, I don't understand how these people don't don't realize. First of all, you know the racist Nazi shit, well, but also just how angry. just how sad and immature and pathetic you look. Like Elon Musk, oh my for gosh. all of his genius apparently that he is although all no. ever, all I ever hear is how his shit breaks like I don't know he's not what's the genius he's, here what no is genius. it the genius is that he had money to back you know something interesting you know what I mean the greatest part for me about that rally too was there was a picture of him standing next to Melania and they're in the audience yeah. doing this and then it you know the, these are the immigrants they want to deport like right. y'all don't because they're rich and they're above this they don't real under they don't remember that they're also fucking immigrants? Oh, they remember. They remember, but they're racist because it's only certain immigrants that they don't How want. is it you know what how I mean? are you that dis like you're that disconnected from all of that that you don't remember that you are not American either. You're an immigrant too. They're talking about you and your people, your fucking people. Man, I don't know. Wild. Um the thing about that. Um, MSG that event with it was one angry person Ooh. after the next screaming mm. at the camera red faced bloated yeah. just so uh, they all looked unhinged it was just these angry dudes one angry dude after the next that Grant Cardone mm. he's a he's a he's a he's a Florida guy that guy, he's, and he's a big Scientologist, too. Oh, my God. Backed by Scientology. Um, but he was on there screaming, I, I, all of them, and they have nothing to say except to yell at everyone about how they want to hurt people, how people deserve to, you know, be killed. Like, it's, I, I don't, the people sitting in there listening to this, I don't get it. And then they have that stupid comedian making all of the racist jokes about Puerto Rico. These are people, and if you, and you're supposed to be leading a country, and everything out of the guy's mouth is divisive. Yeah. There is nothing unifying at all. And I don't, and also not funny. I, I think he bombed, obviously. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't, I didn't see a lot, I didn't hear, a, like, roarous laughter at the M no. at Madison Square Garden for this guy. It'll be the first and last time he ever plays. I mean, he certainly will become more popular in that, cr in that MAGA crowd. Yeah. But your career as far as like it's over like yeah. that's it that's all you're going to be known for and there's this mark Marin put this incredible post up about comedians after that thing happened yeah. and he said that my colleagues right um they, that come out like this i gotta tell you i put dave Chappelle in this group of people uh jim brewer is in that group of people like they they fight saying they're saying free speech god god i i love um what's his name oh my god Ricky Gervais, love him. The, the BBC office is like one of my right. top shows of all time, <laughs> top five at least. And he likes to do these trans jokes as well. They talk about how this is free speech. It's, it's, there's a level of free, that you go beyond, you go beyond. And so when you are at these rallies and you're making these jokes, you're, all you're doing is helping pave the way for fascism. Like that's all you're doing when you're standing at the rally. You're not, this isn't a free speech issue. No. This is you making it more joyful for people to walk down the road towards fascism because they don't know what's at the end of that. Because nine times yeah. out of 10, anybody walking down that path, they're gonna be thrown in the ovens too. They sure are. They came for the Catholics in Germany, y'all. It I wasn't know. just Jews, they came yeah. for everybody. So let's just all try to keep that in mind when you think that you're gonna rah-rah, they're coming for you. Safe. 
Yeah. And, and, and um, man, when I see like the all of the Latino voters. Oh my God. I'm like, you think that they're not coming for you? Okay. Okay. You think you're safe. And by the way, they'll prop you up. Every time I, they see, I see a Trump rally, I see a couple of Latinos or a, a one black person standing behind him. You know, they pull them from the crowd to put them right behind him so they can be on camera. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's wild. It is. It's wild. They think like they're unicorns in the group, but they're going to come for you. They'll turn on you too. It's... And I, I, I've been seeing some other things too that the issues with men wanting to just not vote for Kamala because she's a woman. Yeah. And um, there was some guy, oh God, I forget his name. It was some, some rapper or something. Mm -hmm. But he was like, you know, real men aren't afraid to vote for a woman. Yeah. You know, and like trying to put this message out there to dudes. And then I sent you guys the uh, Two Life Crew. Yes. I mean, how great was that? Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke coming out saying like, what are you stupid? Like, this is what's going on. Like, open your eyes. Yeah. And I think people really need to open their eyes to what Trump says because everybody with Trump, he's always, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. Like, uh, like he gets every excuse to somehow not be held accountable for the words that come out of his mouth. But Kamala, every single thing that she says and does, it's like she's got to be 100% perfect in every way. Yeah. And he doesn't get to be. And it's not fair. Because he said, again, this is another way he has set himself up to... She, he says so many awful things that were numb to it, which is yeah. crazy. And there's a couple things I want to say about that. First of all, um, I did notice, I don't know why it just occurred to me this week, but but when Hillary was running against Trump, it was very much like, oh, we're going to have the first woman president. We were so wrapped up in this idea of this first woman president because he was such a clown that we, that we thought he wasn't going to get elected, yeah. right? So we were so in awe of this idea, at least... That's how I felt about it. Yeah, now, I in this election, no I don't even think about how she's a woman, honestly. And uh, I know yeah, there are true. men who focus right. on that. You're absolutely right. Oh, I agree are. with that. Yeah. But I don't even think about that because most people are like, not him again. Yeah. Right now, it's like, no, no, well, we know what he can do. He's not a funny, goofy clown who can't be elected. We've lived through that. We don't want it again. And so this is what our choice is. And I don't hear people going, first woman. I really don't hear that. I don't really hear it as much either. You know, you're it's right, about, you're right. let's get rid of this guy. This can't be yeah. him. The other thing I wanted to say is the Kamala um, campaign has put out ads this week because we're really get, Julia Roberts narrated one yeah. where um, I've, did the, I've, the seen, one. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a couple of them where these women are going to the polls with their husbands. Obviously, there's a stereotype of like white women with their husbands are wearing like they can't wear Maga hats, so it's like a flag on the hat to imply. Unless you're in Pompano, you can wear Maga <laughs> right. hats. Wear whatever you want. You can do whatever you want there. <laughs> um, and walk right into the booth. There's this. This has been brought up. I remember even at a Dolphins meeting a couple weeks ago, Alfredo had mentioned this. Like women are going to the polls and not telling their husbands, and there was a big laughter. You and I were sitting in the back of the crowd, and the, the room like was laughing about how funny it was that these women had to do this thing. I get that. But what I see in that ad is so frightening to me. Yeah. And as a woman, and it's it's a good it's good to bring that up and say to women, you know, blah blah blah. Or we've seen it all all over online where there's posts saying, hey, whatever. Like in Texas what? bathrooms, yeah. people are women are putting up flyers saying, by the way, your husband will never know. Correct. And um, to vote, you know, your conscious or whatever, because yeah. what's happening there is like what's happening in Florida with abortions. I just want people to understand That's scary. That is fucking scary to yeah. me. That we have to, it's going to be, a, yeah, what's happening in that relationship? Yeah. What's happening in that house? Please yeah. understand that's not a funny situation. That's frightening that this these women, um, we are implying, what we're implying with that ad is that they are under the thumb of their husband and his control yeah. and his ideas. And she's going, like, we I know saw, women I vote like it. that, but I we saw can't. I at at, at yes. volunteering. There was a couple and the guy, I handed them their voters guides. And they were Democratic, and he saw that it was Democratic, and the woman was, like, reading through it, and he handed his back to me and then plucked it out of her hand and said, you don't need this one. Right. Hello. Now, it's happening. Like, hello. It's happening. And I get it, like, you know, where other women are like, well, you know, I want a relationship where, where my husband doesn't care how I vote, you know? Like, well, everyone would love that, but there are women who are in these situations yeah. and maybe feel like they have to kind of put on the show for their husband but like right. inside maybe no like i can't do it and that 
I like that they, hey, you're supported in this, like, go do it. And then the one for the men was the same thing. It's like these bros, you know, like, uh, going in, like, oh, you know what to do, you know what to do. And then the guy looks at his daughter, and he's like, yeah, I know what to do. And so I'm hoping that there's some of those men, too, who feel like that maybe there's pressure from their community or they're in, like, these districts or areas where it's expected for you to, like, be a MAGA dude. You know what I mean? Listen, and, this has been going on since since Jim Crow. You know? And, and, and Jim Crow with the women that would run back to their husbands and say, this black man looked at me on the street. And they'd yeah. play along in this idea of... And just I just want to make it clear that it, it may seem like a, a commercial that... I, I don't know. To me, that sort of relationship is really scary. And it's we need to acknowledge scary. what we're yeah. actually saying about that relationship. Yeah. That women are living in these homes like this. like <laughs> It's not good. No, it's not good. And there was a guy, uh, one of these awful, you know, these guys on these awful, like, oh, with these, these mouthpieces. Pieces, and yeah. he was on Megyn Kelly, and he was saying, like, these men work hard, and they take care of these wives, and they're going to go against their husbands who provide for them. And I was like, woo! It's not your <laughs> husband's wow. business. Wow. It's nobody's business, frankly. Right. But they're, I think when you come out of that booth, you know, someone will say, who'd you vote for? You could say none of your business. It's nobody's business who you're voting for. Oh, you're voting. Oh, you're going to vote for him? Yeah, I'm going to vote for him. How's your wife? How's your yeah. wife? Oh, yeah, she's going to vote for him. Yeah. Like, my what God. My God. Um, so some of the things that I think what's happening this week too is in the final push for their campaign, you see the stark difference between mm. these two candidates, right? You have Kamala who is trying to talk about policy and like the different things that she will put in place. And then you have Trump who's doing the same thing that he did when he ran in for the, the first time and the second time and now this time. And it's fear mongering specifically mm. with the undocumented immigrants, talking about them in dehumanizing ways He's still lying about the violence. They're all coming in. There's violence and murder and rape. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's frustrating. And then you have Kamala who I was like, oh, wow. In Milwaukee yesterday who came up on the stage and then, um, because Trump recently made that comment and I get the context because everyone knows you're taking it out of context. The context was they were talking about war and he was saying how Liz Cheney is this Ooh, war mongerer. Girl. And how would she like it? And well, first of all, he called her dumb and stupid, right? And then how would she like it if there were barrels, uh, nine barrels, I forget how many barrels, pointed at her face? So I get it. You're saying, okay. If you, we if know you have what to will to happen war, to her now, right? right? We understand. Right. But I understand what he's trying to say, that like, it's easy to vote for war when you don't go for war. You could just say that, but instead you want to push that violent image of gun barrels in her face and you do that deliberately yes because you want people who are your followers because that's all they know is like oh yeah i put a gun to her face right that's what they think in their head so you could try to like backpedal it all you want but she came out and she pointed out they were both in milwaukee mm -hmm. at separate rallies and she pointed out and said that trump she said he is unfit to leave she said it she said, this is a disqualifying event. When you have a, a person running for office saying that this is a disqualifying event, we cannot vote for someone who is so loose with his lips about things that are dangerous to people. I mean, this is, and, and also how long have we been begging for Republicans to come out and stand against him? And this is someone, you know, Liz Cheney, for all of the things that I will never agree with her on or her her talking about warmongering husband, uh, father, excuse me, father, like, um, this is someone who's actually put sh her political career's over. It's over. It's she over. Has, she put she's everything gonna be persona on the line. non grata in that everything party. Everything on the line. And, um, and, and for good reason. Like, for what's is, right. She, as, uh, someone who sat at that, Jan had, was it one of the co chairs of that January 6th committee? She knew what was important and what was needed to be done to protect this country. She's country first, not, yeah. not a not, not, uh, um, yeah. uh, party first. Correct. So for that, she should be, you know, vilified. Well, this is his thing, right? Threats to political enemies. That's not what the uh, United States of America does, no. right? Kamala Harris has said that in her office, right, like that she is is that she is there for all Americans, whether you vote for me or not. Joe Biden said the same thing. Trump calls anyone who's not voting for him the enemy from within, who has to be destroyed. 
So that's you even calling on violence to everyday average American citizens who didn't check the box for your name. Like what? Like now I have to live in fear and Hillary has to live in fear and people have to live in fear because of how we voted. That's part of the democratic process and people should not feel like their lives are threatened for it. Well, it's, it, I don't want like to bring he, up Hitler, Germany, yeah. but you had to whisper and have secret meetings to talk about how you didn't like the Fuhrer and what was happening. You know, you couldn't speak out loud in any dictator. Cuba, Cuba, yeah. you can't talk about, you couldn't talk about Castro. It was whispers because you would be thrown in jail. That's what we're talking about. That's what he's depicting when he Go describes these 1984. Things. Let's. Let, I wanted to read some quotes that the New York Times put up about from all his former oh, I posted that. staff I, I think, that would work yes. for him or was his what it was in his um, cabinet. Cabinet. Um, all Republicans. All people who are again putting country first. John Kelly, his former chief of staff, said in a recent interview. Surely, you, when he talked about the loyalty of German generals, when Hitler would yeah. talk about, or Hitler. Trump. Trump. I mean, <laughs> my bad. One and the same. <laughs> my bad. One and the same. When Trump would talk about his admiration for Hitler, he said, I really need to have German generals. And John Kelly said to him, quote, surely you can't mean Hitler's generals. And he said, yeah, yeah, Hitler's generals. Um, James Mattis, his former Secretary of State, quote, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Instead, he tries to divide us, end quote. Mike Pence, mother, mother, quote, the American people deserve to know that President Trump asked me to put him over my oath to the Constitution, but I kept my oath and I always will, end quote. And the oath to the Constitution. These are the people who are like the Constitution, the Constitution, the Constitution. Well, but it doesn't matter. Fathers. But it doesn't matter when it's Trump, right? Yeah. He wipes right? his ass with the Constitution. Right. Bitch. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster, his former National Security Advisor. By the way, he loved these people until they did it, and then he right. Did, right. Quote: Trump lacked basic knowledge of how the government runs. End quote. Oh my God. <laughs> he don't know. He don't know, y'all. He don't know how it runs. <laughs> but, I mean, this is. These are people, by the way. These are people who job. have served their entire yes. lives in the military, who have dedicated their lives to public service yes. to guide this nation. Right. They walk into the Oval Office and he's like, "Humming, humming, humming." Where's my McDonald's? Like, yeah. for any job, and we've said it on here before, for any job. <laughs> You have to have some basic requirements. He's learning right? on the job. When you look at it, right? It's like basic requirements, right? You need this in order to apply for the job. He doesn't have any of those qualifications. And yet, yet, the hiring people, which is us, are going to put this man in office. We're going to hire him for the job. When there's nothing, if you look at it, if you just look at him on paper, the man has no knowledge of anything. Um, Nikki Haley, former UN ambassador, although we, we know she's a bit of a fucking traitor. Yeah. Uh, well, we need to acknowledge to, he let us down. He went down a path he shouldn't have, and we shouldn't have followed him, and we shouldn't have listened to him, and we can't let that ever happen again. You know what? Screw all of them, though, because you all got on board. Well, and, she now, did. Not, and now, she's one. I don't know about these other guys, but she, she definitely did. Uh, Rex Tillerson, who's always my favorite, he called him, a, remember, he called him a, a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> He's like one of these old Texas guys. Uh, quote, so many people had who had access to his ear were telling him things, most of which were untrue. And then he began to listen to those voices and form a view that had no basis in fact, end quote. But they don't, fact doesn't matter, right? This is James Comey, former FBI director, quote, this president is unethical and untethered to truth and institutional values. His leadership is transactional, ego-driven, and about personal loyalty, end quote. I, listen. This, this, it, the other, so they, they came out and then, you know, all these celebrities have been coming out. And I, which, I, yeah, okay, and, and thank I'm like, you. I'm like, me okay. too, me too. I'm like, people are going to go, oh, great, J-Lo. Like, yeah. I don't, it really doesn't help people. It doesn't right. make people want right. to vote. I, to me, it's but, a distraction. So and me, like, to me too. And I think maybe certain, maybe certain celebrities, right, might have some sway um, with certain Populations, dummies. you know what I mean? Like people who were like, eh, I don't care. And then J-Lo's going to go, and they come out and they go, and they're like, yeah, you know, right. they're like, you got to do it. Or like, if, or Taylor Swift or yeah. something that's like, you know, you got to come out. Or if there's like these rappers and things with like trying to get men, like, listen, you got to go out and do it. Like, I, I think that, 
like 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 that Luther yeah, no, you know, I get might it. have some sway over people that they might go, okay, you know what, I will go out. Maybe yeah. it might not be everybody. Yeah. But even if it's one or two people that are like, you know what, fine. Yeah. I'll go do it. Like if it shows up in their feed, maybe. Um but Kamala just Kamala Harris just had um Arnold Terminator come out. Big, and here we huge, have huge. he's not just a celebrity, but this is someone who was He's a Republican. Uh, a, a Republican, but also governor governor of California. And the thing that I like about Arnold Schwarzenegger is, yeah, he is a Republican. He's like he's like one of these like fiscally conservative guys, like with spending. But he also is very, very, very pro climate. Yes, you know what I mean. So yeah. like, yeah, he's a Republican on issues, but he and he said it in this. He gave this great like. Um, um, post he put this great post out about like here's things that I did and, and you got to work across the aisle and he was like I would never vote for Trump never vote for Trump and it's like okay why can't we go back to like those Republicans like By the that way, kind of Republican that's like yes. hey we can work together because we don't we don't have that you have instead on the Trump side his celebrity is Elon Musk, who is essentially using his platform to spread misinformation yeah. about this election. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's 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 the, the differences between the two and everyone who supports it. It's so stark. Yeah. It's so stark that it should be so clear, but it's not. Uh, go to listen to episode 49 of the Muck Podcast because we covered Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes. We did. Um, we did. Also, the thing about Elon Musk that came out this week, which is also oh, kind of funny, God. or not funny, but like also like this is the guy like the the religious Christian Catholic people. Elon Musk bought a huge piece of property in Austin, Texas, so that because you know he has like tw twelve children with nine different women, yeah. and he has three of those women living on this property. It's big, the, love, uh, big, it's love, big love, a big love, a big love. Big love. Yeah, I, I read that. I go, like, bitch, that's what I he's said. Bill Paxton, he's Bill Paxton, bitch. Well, he's, but he's not. But wait, what's Bill Paxton's character's name? Oh shit, Bill something. It was Bill. Bill, yeah. hold on. He ran for office. <laughs> I remember that. That was his downfall. He was an asshole. We are, I rewatched that recently. And I was Bill like, Hendrickson. Bill Hendrick. He's Bill yes. Hendrickson, y'all. And he's got three houses, and he can. All the kids are living, uh, running around together, and he can visit the houses. Yeah. Easily. He's a polygamist. Fine. In my opinion, do, that's listen, what it sounds like. Do your thing. But like, dude. you. This is who y'all are cheering for. He. And by the way, he is the biggest motherfucking geek on the planet. I have never in my life seen someone so. Um, awkward, Ugh. awkward. And did you see his new Make America Great hat again? Uh, yeah, or, or hat, not, Nazi hat. It's in the Mein Kampf kind of like Hitler the font, font, the font that Hitler used. Yeah. Oh, it's gothic style. Oh, we know who you are. You <laughs> act like we don't have access to stupid. the internet. Yeah. That you yeah. are a part of. Yeah, you don't own it. You don't own it. You don't fuck. You don't own it. He's all. so cringe. I can't take yeah. this fuck. How is somebody having sex with this man? How? So many times I have all those. How? Big, you know how here. Ching 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 ching. How? Ching, ching, how? Ching, you ching, that's ching, ching, that's ching, crazy ching. to me. That's crazy to me. Um. The other thing. Okay. So. Oh, one more thing I want yeah, to say okay. about Trump and the difference between the two and these like days leading into the election is, you know, we have Pennsylvania, which is, you know, a swing state and it's an important state. And uh, already, already Trump is saying how the election is being stolen there. Right. And Let's we know, just ramp up we know days. yeah, that on election day, or he is going to say from the beginning, uh, Bernie Sanders put a post about it, like he's going to deny this election. So you have one candidate who is going to accept the results of the election and another candidate who is not. And we know what happened last time, right? Stop the steal, January 6th, right? So it's where we're back. He talks about, I'm not an insurrectionist. I didn't do anything wrong. But here you are again, talking about <sighs> the election's going to be stolen. You can't say, yes, I will accept the results of the election. And I don't understand how people can't see this. Because there's a rage or something, and there's also this, he has the inability to look bad in public or lose. He can't do it. So they're going to do whatever they can. You've got lunatics blowing up fucking ballot boxes. Uh, you've got, you Trump know what I mean? Trump supporter. Yeah, you got... Let's not say lunatic. A lunatic Trump well, supporter. I think that goes without saying, but yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's... um, it, He will deny losing, and there will probably be shenanigans. 
That's probably what's going to happen. Absolutely. But what are we going to do about that? We can't do anything about it. We got to leave that up to the people who can take care of it. They don't, they still don't believe something that happened four years ago. We can't, can't. they're lost in it. They're lost in it. And there's a, there's an inability to, they can't separate themselves from, from the craziness. Um, I do want to talk about before we wrap this whole thing up. Oh yeah, I have a, I have just a couple. Things. I have Florida things. Okay. So do you have anything? I, I just before wanted that? to kind of like just super quickly, and I know this is a pain. Yeah. But like for people that you want to share with your family, like oh, how are they on the issues? Abortion. We know that Kamala wants Kamala Harris. I want to just make sure I say Harris, Harris, Harris. Um, wants to enshrine abortion rights and those uh, uh, and protect abortion rights in our country. Trump has said in the past that he would do a national abortion ban. He has said in the past that he would protect whatever the states want to do, whether that's persecuting women for having abortions or not. Um, and now he's kind of been flip-floppy because he's like, oh, we're going to lose the female vote. So this is someone you can't trust what he says on the issue. Kamala Harris has said that she is going to keep the ACA, the American uh, uh, Care Act, um, no, Affordable Care Act. Yeah. <laughs> and Trump recently, Mike Johnson and him, they have Ooh, a little secret. Mike Johnson keeps... They have a little secret. That Mike Johnson keeps slipping. And boy. you know what that little secret is? <laughs> that little secret is we're going to take away the ACA. What does that mean? That means kicking millions of people off of health care. That means not having protections for pre-existing conditions so people like me could lose my current insurance because I had uh, cancer in the past, right? Or people with diabetes, or people who you know actually need the health care. So, and we know Kamala wants to expand Medicaid, and she to wants to taking care of elderly folks so they can stay home, and people are able to take care of their, of parents. their families. That's I mean, huge. That is huge. That's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Um, inflation. They keep talking about inflation. You want to talk about money? She's talking about how she wants to work to lower the food and the housing costs, and like the different plans that she has to try to do that. Trump, I'm going to make America affordable again. How is he going to do that? His plan is to drill baby drills so to lower the energy costs. So let's screw the environment. Taxes, <sighs> big business, and folks making over 400 is what uh, Kamala Harris's plan is to raise taxes there. Trump, tax cuts that only help the rich. Climate, we know that she has talked about doing reductions and tax breaks for clean energy use. She has rolled back a little bit on the fracking, Oof. right? But Trump is just... It, Drill, drill, drill. And he's talking about expanding drilling in places like Alaska that already have like mm. protected status. Immigration, that border yeah. bill that was already created, I'm sure she's going to work to She pass. already said she would sign it. And she um, talked about like really being hard on human trafficking. Trump, mass deportation. That's his plan, right? Oh, but let me step in real quick. Yeah. Mass deportation where he doesn't care if you are actually... A legal resident or not. Yes. We'll figure that out later. later. Which means after you're gone. Who, that's right. After you're gone. Where you're going to ruin someone's life just because of... He literally said on the stage yesterday, you can be at the border and see them pouring in and say, he's, he's good, he's bad, 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 bad. Yeah. By looking at a person, they can judge whether they're a good immigrant or a bad immigrant. When you're walking down the street and you're a person of color who looks like you're not... Good. Whatever. Right? What does that mean? They're going to pull you off the street and where are your papers? It's right? going to, that's going to happen. Yeah. Like people who are literally citizens of the United States, he doesn't care. He's not going to check that. That's, he literally said that on stage this week. And then the last thing is like the folks that are going to be appointed, right? Because we mm. know that, 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 that there's all these appointments. Kamala Harris is going to choose qualified people. She's even going to probably appoint some Republicans to positions because she is all about building, right? Um, Trump has promised to appoint cronies with no experience. And let's just talk about two. One we already talked about. Oof, uh, Elon Musk as the head of fina finance. And what did Musk say with his plan? Well, with my plan, the middle class is going to have to suffer for a while until things work out. <laughs> so how long is that? How long is a while for the billionaire to make the rest of us suffer so that he can keep making money. And then the other person Ooh. is our favorite, mm. RFK, as head of the public health agencies, an anti-vaxxer who has no medical degree and no experience, but sure, the Food and Drug Administration and our, you know, our CDC, 
okay, why not? That alone should be enough to make people go, ooh, that doesn't sound right. So if you need just some points, like, like back and forth, oh, it's this, it's this, here are the things. Like, just talk to people, yeah. get Who's them it? to see the difference. If they're unsure, like, and if they haven't voted yet and they, they're like, eh, like, just beg everyone. Call everybody, go through your phone, and just start texting your friends. Hey, did you vote yet? Hey, did you vote yet? Do you need to know where to vote? Like, just do that and, like, get people out. Bannon, is he going to be the head of the FBI oh and the CIA? Because that's also what happens under dictatorship. That's also what happens. It's because those names I just read to you are people who work in the government and who they would select, you know, as the president to be in charge of these things. And that one after one, how many chiefs of staff did he go through? How many people did the Department <laughs> of Defense? How many, like, record number he had to keep replacing them? Because they'd walk in and they'd talk to him and they'd go, uh, I can't do that. He's not, but he's also not, I, I can't. I don't want to be linked to this because oh, he doesn't God. know what he's doing. So what he's going to do is then put people in place who are just yes men who have no experience. Is Rudy Giuliani going to be the new <laughs> attorney general? Can you imagine? Can you is imagine? Steve Miller going to be in charge of the Homeland Security? Oh, Jesus. Like, okay. these are real people. This is what a dictatorship is. This is what they do. They put people in charge who are only going to say yes to him, and that's not okay either. So cut this clip from Tina starting and me ending this right here. And we're saying to go vote. This is what we're... To, cut this clip and send it to people. Do that. Because this is what's really going to affect them. So I want to talk about Florida. There's a couple of things. First of all, there was an incredible article. Um, I will let, you know what? Let me skip that first. I wanted to play you a clip because guess who was on Mark Marin this week? Who? To my lovely surprise, I was so excited. Um, Billy Corbin. Oh, that's your favorite. Who's, yeah, he's These a South are your two Florida. favorites together. I was beside myself. Bitch. Um, <laughs> so he's got a new movie coming out, um, a new documentary about uh, a, a, a Russian guy who was part of Trump's schemes to set up Hunter Biden. Oh, documentary. Gosh. He's a documentary filmmaker. He made Cocaine Cowboys and yeah, and great yeah, movies. yeah, yeah, yeah. He always follows. Does you should listen to. He talks a lot about Florida, obviously, and like all he called. They have a file at their office, like a, a Google Drive. It's like Florida men that they want to cover, like just crazy stuff. But I anyway, love this. amazing. He was so good on there, and apparently their mothers, because Mark's mother used to live in Miami or like South Florida, and he knows. She knows Billy's mother. And oh, so she would always cute. be like, Billy, when are you going on Mark's podcast or whatever? <laughs> Anyways, also in the podcast, Mark mentions that his brother moved the mother out of South Florida and now they live in Jupiter because that's where he lives. Oh. And I'm like, my brother lives in Jupiter. What's going on? And he's like, I can't stand it because it's yeah. farmland, bitch, farmland. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so anyway, they talk a lot about Florida politics and what it's like and what's happening. And there was this little clip. It's a... It's like 30 seconds long I want to play. But Mark, uh, Billy Corbin talks about what's going to be the end of Florida. And I was shook. And I wanted to play it for you because it's very eye-opening and, oh, and real. And it's real because we're living it. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Why? In Florida. The end of Florida will not be when the flood comes. Yeah. It will be when the insurance companies abandon Florida. When you can't get a 30-year mortgage because the banks are like, this is not a going concern. Yeah, and the insurance companies water. are like, yeah. we're not going to insure you because we're not going to go bankrupt uh, on this godforsaken place that, you know, the, sure. that Mother Nature clearly wants to reclaim the wetlands from. Yeah. So, so that's going to be the death knell when, when it's only for people who can afford to build, rebuild, and self-insure. And then it's over. Yeah. Goosebumps. Yeah. Absolute that, I mean, goosebumps. I, I've heard this before. I've heard this before, that there's going to come a point where it's uninsurable. I, I feel and that way now, to be I honest feel like that, Yeah, because like um, the, the insurance companies don't pay out, and like we've seen it article after article down here. And the thing that scares me is I'm not a rich person. Yeah. Um, and like my little, my little nest egg... Is my house. Yeah, me too. Right? Me too. Sell my house, get a decent little amount of money for it, and go retire somewhere, yeah, right? Same. And I am so afraid yeah. that that there's gonna come a point where we don't have insurance, something bad happens, and then like I'm gonna be 80 years old, like working because everything has been taken from me. And I the 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 level of fear I have for that. I can't tell you. Me too. I can't tell you. It's because only I'm not. Thing. I'm not 20 years old, right? You know what I mean. And but I got also kids, people. I have kids who are going to be going to college, and I got to help with that. And yeah, it is frightening to me that, 
really everything could be gone and like but can we also mention that both of our parents, neither of them have insurance on their home? Correct. And so they're also in their 70s. Yeah. And I'm assuming, I mean, my parents are. My parents, and yeah. yeah. And so the scenario you just described could be them. That could be them. At a storm. We're still in hurricane season. And I... And what then? Yeah. It's... What then? It is one of... And also the way that the insurance companies... The reason why I'm saying this is happening now is because the way the insurance companies are hedging their bets with the risk is by raising those costs of the insurance. That's how they're doing it. Right. They're going to keep their bulking, you know, putting that money away, put, put, taking, taking, taking all that money and then and not then paying not out on out. claims. <laughs> and so that's how they're able to add insurance companies here, these fly-by-night insurance companies that are coming here. And then, of course, we have a legislature that doesn't create laws to hold them accountable when they fly away at night right. and take all of our money. And so... Um, yeah, and then you have a governor whose main focus is to take the taxpayer dollars and try not to get marijuana legal and to keep women's rights away. That's what he's been doing yeah. for months. And and, and we, we have, have bigger this fr- is yeah, a, we have bigger fish to fry, man. This is this <laughs> is huge. It's huge. And I every week I send T- Tina at least two videos of places who are flooded. Spain this week. There's an area yes. of Spain that w- washed away. Like every week, it's not just one place. We're not talking about just Florida. Look at what happened in Asheville and yeah. Georgia this week, two weeks ago, a month ago. This is a real thing that's happening everywhere, the flooding. This is when they said the world's going to flood. Yeah. Bitch, this is it. It's happening. Places you don't expect are being flooded. And Florida, of course, we live in a place where we accept that this is a truth. And we pay the insurance thinking that we're going to be okay. And then you hear that. When I hear that, I go, that is that is a reality that is, by the way, within uh, my lifetime. Yes. I'm going to see that. Yeah. I'm going to see that happen. Yeah. And I'm not going to be here anymore when it does. I, I literally was just talking to my ex-husband last night. And he goes, what's your plan for the next five years? I go, okay, well, five years, my son will be graduating high school. And I don't know where my kids are going to land. This is my issue. Yeah. If they go to school here, I got to stay yep. to figure it out. But I, my plan is to get out of here. My plan is to sell this house, get out of here, have my nest egg, get a job in a city or a county, work for 20 years, get yeah. my pension, and retire. That's what I think I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm hoping I'm going to be doing 20, 15 years, whatever. Yeah. I'll die at a desk. I know that I'm dying at a desk. Girl. I know. It's fine. Girl. It's fine. I just don't want to be... It just, it's not going to be in Florida. I'll tell you that. It's not going to be in Florida. I don't... I didn't live my whole life here. I've enjoyed the life that I could here. This is not a place for long-term anybody. Nobody. It's not long-term. It's not a long-term plan. And if... if, if and if my parents... One sorry. last thing. If my parents are still here, I'm going to grab them by the collars because they're not going to be flooded and get them the fuck out of here too. Yeah. They'll come with me. I don't care what's happening. I'm just not going to be here, y'all. If we had proper leadership... Again, from thank 20 you. 20 years Woo, ago. That's it. Where we could have been tackling the infrastructure and thinking about how does the water move? Where are those flood zones? How can we build to let the water out like there are things that you can do in an architectural sense yes to think about cities and the impact of climate especially in a state like florida yeah and we're at sea level and city insurance companies as tina mentioned a couple months ago on the podcast insurance companies have a vested interest in that so if i live in my city of pompano beach that i love and they were to take the precautions to say in Pompano, we're going to be doing X, Y, and Z to make sure right. we're not affected by climate change. As a resident of Pompano, if an insurance company sees that and was like, well, Pompano's yeah. thinking, we're, this house is actually going to be okay because right. Pompano's right. doing X, Y, Z. Maybe that would help my insurance rates. But I also wonder if a state down level, state would, because of a home rule and all of that, if they would say, you can't do these things. I don't sure. know. I don't know. Who knows? Know. When we have nut jobs that they They have. could require, like the same thing, like, oh, you have to use paper straws in the city. Is there yeah. a way that the gov- state government would say, you can't require your residents to do this to they, their homes to be able, you know, I just don't know. But you're right. We live in a, we also then live in a state where, I, when I say we have to escape, it's because there's no one coming to help us. You got to wake up. There's no one coming to help you. So you got to make the, and 
And let me say something else. We gotta get out while the getting's good. That's that's the thing. I gotta get out when someone still wants to fucking live here. Thank you. Because it might get to the point where someone's like, why would I buy this house? I'm gonna be yeah. uh, flooded in five minutes. Like, right. got well, to get the fuck out. And, out, out, out. And the other thing that the insurance companies do down here is, um, like State Farm, if you want to get insurance on your house, the house has to be built, like, after 2000 yeah. and something. 80s. And 80s, so, I thought. Well, no, now it's 2000. Some, some of them. Who has some a of them. Girl, please. So if you have an old Florida ranch home from, like, the 50s or 60s, you're screwed. But what's happening is you have people who are just, bought, like, in my neighborhood, I've said it before, and it's a nice neighborhood. People are coming in. They're buying these old ranch houses. They knock them down immediately, and then they're rebuilding. So now they can get whatever insurance right. they want because now they have like the proper again who can afford to do that but, who can afford to do that right right but there's but those are the people that are coming down here and i'm like well i'll sell my house <laughs> to one of them you can knock my house down i don't care as long as you give me a good price for it right. i can get out right 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 you know so oh god i know i so that's our reality here yeah. and it's something that once a year i have to relive because I have to renew my insurance and I get my quote and I go, Oh no, that's not going to be good. I can't, that's in my mortgage, it's my, it's, you know, it's escrowed into your mortgage payment and that's on my fucking head. And I go, no, can't do that. Yeah. Can't do that. Um, yeah. So that being said, uh, I did want to talk about, you know, we have early voting going on in Florida. We have for the last two weeks, of course, today's Monday, November 4th. So oh, God. it ended yesterday and tomorrow is election day, but the numbers coming out of Florida is incredible as of, Today, um, the second, when we're recording this, we're up to over 50% of Floridians have voted. When I tell you all that's a record number in early voting, it's incredible. 50% of Floridians, yeah. Floridians never come out to we vote. We never vote. But it's, I'm, but it's wild to me. Out? That's so it's a majority. Thing. So we're, it's majority, very red. Yeah. It's the Republicans are out voting us. In Broward, we just, Democrats just started to, um, and Alfredo was explaining to me, that means these Republican super voters have stopped, have, are done. And the people that leave, left to come out are like tomorrow, well, yesterday, November, yeah. November 3rd was sold to the polls as a big, uh, in the black community. They go to church on Sunday morning and then they march to the polls. That's a big democratic push. That will be good. There's, there's um, a caravan happening today or on Saturday. Yeah. November third, third. Um, so there, there are, there are efforts. There are, but um, I, so, so we'll see. I, Florida will go red. I think it'll be very, very close. Uh, I think it'll be one of the closest elections for presidential that we've seen in a long time. But I just, I just don't have yeah. a, a lot of hope God, for here. But that's okay. West, if we had Miami, Orlando, and West Palm, like boom, we'd have the state. Yeah, and I saw a and lot my, of Miami. Tweets. I hear is is moving. A yeah. little more blue. We'll see. But West Palm we'll is see. still red. But also, I've seen a lot of tweets where people are like, yeah, there's a lot of Republicans voting, but remember, they could be voting for Kamala. And I'm like, calm down. Calm yeah. down. You don't live in, you don't live there. You yeah. live here. You live in Florida. They're not. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's some, but honey, no. No, let's let's all take a deep fucking breath, okay? Um, but it's not shocking. We know we live in a red state. That's fine. Um but there was this great New York Times article that, for some reason, the Sun Sentinel blessed us <laughs> and allowed it to be printed in our paper yesterday on oh uh, November 1st. I sent it to you and Justin, and I said, holy shit, <laughs> oh, you should look at this article. It's, a, it's called Florida's Swing State Status Ebbed Slowly Then All at Once. It's by Patricia Mazai, and she wrote it for the New York Times. I just want to read a couple of things because it really delves into... What happened here? Because, you know, what are we, 19 electoral votes? We're a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And we're on the East Coast. We're one of the first states. You know, that East Coast is really what you win, boom, boom, yeah, boom. Yeah, but before then... you read this, get rid of the damn electoral college. Right. I know we need a constitutional amendment, but honestly, we are at the point now where the voices of the people are not being heard. Yeah. I know it'll never happen. We need one of those, uh, what do they call it, a constitutional convention? Amen. Oh. That's what we need, where they go back and they look at the Constitution. Like, we, I, 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 don't you think? Yeah. God damn So, it's a great article. I encourage anybody from Florida to go read it. Um, you can see it in the Sun Sentinel. I don't you know, New York Times got that paywall, but maybe Sun Sentinel does too. Anyway, let me know. I'll email it to you. Anyway, uh, some of the things I found interesting... Uh, it says, in the past four years, the Florida Democratic Party has withered and struggled to rebuild. Democrats have lost their edge in registered voters and are now outnumbered by more than one million Republicans. They have not won a state seat since 2018. National fundraising has all but dried up. 
The reasons are, in some cases, structural and long-standing demographics, partisan gerrymandering, and legislative term limits, but others are of Democrats' own making. An unwillingness to invest enough in the nuts and bolts of winning elections, fundraising divisions, and flawed assumptions about the growing Hispanic vote. According to an ex examination of voter registration numbers, campaign spending, and more than two dozen interviews with political operatives in both parties. So this is, they talk to people everywhere in the state, and that's what they were saying. So what happens in November and in the next few election cycles in Florida will be a test for the country's politics. As more people move to the Sun Belt states and, th and those states get more electoral votes, Democrats will have to make inroads there, a lot of them to win the presidency. Now, this is the oh, second God. time this week. I can't in that Mark Maron interview with Billy Corbin, he said, and Mark Maron said it too, Florida is the petri dish of where the country goes. What happens here has always been a testing ground, apparently, for what looks what's going to happen in the country. And it's also in this New York Times article. That's why Florida Democrats and what we do here everywhere in every part of our state and every county is really, really important and why you can't let shit just, you can't let party hacks, which is really my big point. Party hacks. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I said this two weeks ago on the podcast. Enough. Enough. We see them at every level. It's the same old, same old motherfuckers. I'm tired of it. I don't want to see your faces anymore. Don't send me fucking emails. The person who's, I think, the second in command over at the Florida Dems, no more. Tell me one race he has won. Tell me one goddamn race he has won. Zero. I think he won one, but it was out of state. Nothing in Florida that I'm aware of. And he's the second in command at the party. The first in command, the chair, lost to Charlie Chris in a fucking primary, who then lost to DeSantis by 20 motherfucking points. These are the people in charge of our party. Woo! Hacks. Hacks. The chair of the Broward Party is a fucking hack. He's been there too long and doesn't know what's going on. He's a hack. We just elect the same fucking people and over and over again who don't know what they're doing. So why do you think we're here? And we're the fucking Petri dish? No shit. No shit. No shit. While Democrats lost their footing, Repub Republicans seized opportunities to reshape Florida's electorate and to their advantage. A torrent of conservative policies that followed intended to cement the state as an anchor of Republican power, which is what they did, right? They go they there, they gerrymander, worked, they changed the they vote, vote by mail. That's they right. Were, they, they, they said, you know what? While they had a plan. While we're in power. And they did it. We're going to be evil as fuck and we're going to cut the state and we're going to take their votes and we're going to throw them off the voting rolls and we're going to make everything more difficult. But Voter they, IDs, Amendment 4, two, yeah. two sessions ago, not right. this one, but the one to restore the votes of former incarcerated uh, people, returning citizens. They, they, they carved that in like a turkey on yeah. Thanksgiving they when they got to Tallahassee. Yeah. They do what they want. They don't give a fuck. Why don't we do that? I know. Why but don't they, we do they that? they have boots on the ground. They are constantly working. They are constantly working. And there was something in that article about how... They pushed off voter registration. That's a, uh, let me get okay. to that. So to the that. results have forced that's good. The, vo the results have forced Democrats to try to remake their electoral pathways to victory as Florida has slipped away from them. So the other thing they said was unable. To, so Democrats have uh, unable to wield much power. The Florida Democratic Party increasingly outsourced voter registration over the past de decade to nonprofit groups, decentralizing the party was intended to create an enduring progressive infrastructure, but despite raising millions of dollars, outside groups failed to register voters in large numbers. New state laws made it even harder for them to do so because it's that's what the Republicans law. saw. They saw the Democratic Party going, okay, you Florida Rising or whatever, you yeah. group, and you group, you can all register voters so that but we don't have couldn't. to do it. But then you couldn't do it. And then the Republicans saw that and said, no more third party registered voters. Yeah. And then we're screwed. But and they then, had no backup plan. But then, they had no backup that's plan. Right. That happened because as like last session, captains, don't you think we could be knocking doors, registering voters in all of our precincts? Don't you think that they could be doing that in all across the state? There's no, and there hasn't been a clear plan for anyone of step one. And I've said it before on here, from this month to this month, this is what we're doing. And then we're gonna transition to this, and then we're gonna transition to this. There's nothing, I, I just want an outline. 
How long have you been a precinct captain? Six years? Yep. Never once received something telling her what to do! Not once. Brower chair! Brower Democratic the, Party! Where is the precinct captain handbook? I remember- You, you created! Did you I, look at the Republican one? I looked at the Republican one and I made something up and I, I did send it out. Um, but because they gave the work to someone else to do, as if registering voters wasn't the most important. And do you want to know why? Because at that time, we had more registered voters. We always had more registered voters we than Republicans. And then we start outsourcing, outsourcing, how, as if that's ever helped anybody. Outsourced it. The Republicans saw that, changed the rules. And then in, that was in 2023, last session. And then in the summer of 2023, we were told, well, because of these fines, because if you turn in the forms wrong, you get fined and we can't afford to pay the fine. So the Florida Democrats aren't going to, well, there's no plans to register voters. And what happened? What happened? Within eight months of that time, we were out, they had more than a million, they had, yeah. had out-registered us. And then by a couple months ago, there's more than a million registered voters of Republicans here. Because we don't do the right. fucking work. We want to go on a bus tour. Right? Last summer, we're on a fucking bus tour to places where it's a secret address. You gotta register to go to it. But that email to get the secret address was only sent to people involved in the party. So when you look at the videos last summer of Nikki Freed on her goddamn bus tour, who we saw this weekend avoided us like the fucking plague, uh, <laughs> she, uh, she goes and she talks to all the blue hairs. The blue hairs who are very dedicated volunteers, but it's not who we need voting for us, who don't, they don't need to be registered, bitch, they've been registered for 100 years. <laughs> God bless them, God bless them. Where are they need to take their grandkids. Yeah. Hey, thank you for coming, bring your grandchildren. Yeah. Because those kids are all voting for Trump. So that's what we've been doing. Oh, well. uh, the last part of this though, it says this year, here's my favorite part. This year, Nikki Freed, the state party chair, portrayed Florida as back in play. Wee! 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 Oh. <laughs> My hands are shaking. I'm so fucking mad. But operatives know their victories, if any, might be small. Improve turnout. That's all they wanted to do. Win some legislative seats, keep the presidential and Senate races to single digit margins. That's all that, literally. That's it? Literally, that's bitch, all? That was your goal? <laughs> this bitch gets on the phone call this week. I almost died laughing. This bitch gets on the phone call this week for what, a Zoom what? call. Oh. Nikki Freed. Uh, a Zoom call with all these people in the party. And she get the first thing she opens up with, I know you all are looking at the polls and I know that you're wondering about what's going on, but I just want you to know, Florida is still in play. Girl. What are you doing? There's one thing about being a cheerleader and being like rah rah party. Like we talked about Debbie Morska's whole Powell a couple weeks ago. The same thing where I was like, calm down, we, calm down, it's not in play. Right. I hope her seat's in play. I'm I'm rooting for that. We're looking, yeah. Maybe it'll be a, a runoff. We got to count the vote. I don't know, but not runoff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like go a recount. Recount. But stop lying to people. You're in the wrong frame of mind. You're in the wrong frame of mind. We might be, it might be very close, but you need to calm the fuck down. And I will say this, mark my words. If Kamala Harris wins the seat, you better fucking bet your bottom dollar that it has nothing to do with the Florida Democratic Party. Nothing. It's because Trump is on the ticket. They don't get any credit for this and they're going to take the credit. You better believe they're going to take the credit. They had nothing to do with it. They're doing nothing. Stop it. We need to reform this state because shit that that shit Billy Corbin said. This is what we're talking about. Party yeah, hacks. That's reality. Party that's hacks. Reality. That, uh, that we're focusing on bullshit. My last thing is this. Where's Jared Moskowitz? Have you seen him anywhere? Mm -hmm. Bitch, I, I drove past a sign on Federal Highway the other day because he's our congressperson, yeah. our house rep. Where is he? He's haven't seen him at a meeting. Haven't seen him at a meeting. He's haven't seen him at an endorsement. Haven't seen him at a rally. Haven't seen him post anything. But I get emails for fundraising. Where are you, sir? What the hell's going on out there? They're doing something today in Coral Springs with him or Parkland. But like, you know, you represent the East Side too, right? Where's Jared Moskowitz? You may be a walking into this seat. And that's fine. That might be what you're going to do, but we need your voice at rallies about Amendment 4. I know you're a U.S. Congress person, but you represent people who are underneath fascist laws about our bodies. Why aren't you at that rally for Amendment 4? Can somebody tell me that? We had a rally last Sunday. Why aren't you out here? 
Why aren't you out here? We need your help to bring, to promote these issues that we're living under here. That your wife who lives in Broward County is going to be under in Florida. Where is he? Stop sending me goddamn emails for money. I don't even know where you are. Do say what you will about Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She shows that up. That shows up. She shows up. I see up. her everywhere. She She's shows up. everywhere. God, give it to her. Give it to her. Yay. Give it. Give it to her, Tina. Yay, 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 yay. At Let's least go. she shows up. I may hear the same speech I've heard ten times, but she's there. Where is he? Do we not matter over here? Sorry, but that bothers me. You win your seat and then we don't get to see your Air Jordans anymore? Wow. You're busy? You're in a camp. You know you're running a campaign in an election, right? She's comfortable, girl. You shouldn't be so comfortable. comfortable. You shouldn't be so comfortable. Thank you for your work, but also you have to also be a present. And I don't know where you are. You and your campaign. Hmm. Uh, one last thing, because tomorrow is a big day. Yes. This is what I said to Tina this week, and this is what I'm living in. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what happens here, but if Trump gets elected, we will have one more episode, and we will say our thank yous, and we will say our goodbyes. Okay? But I'm going to tell you this, moving on in my life, and I'm going to encourage Tina to do the same and anybody else who's listening, we do not let them take our joy and we do not let them take our love. Do you understand? We don't let them do that. We are going to continue to live our lives and have the joy and the happiness and the love that exists. They can't take that from us. It doesn't mean we turn our backs on the party and we turn our backs on, on the work. We continue to do it in the best way that we can. We continue to be vocal and speak out against the things that are awful and terrible here in Florida and anywhere else that this motherfucker goes, okay? But we don't allow them to take our love and our joy. We hang on to it. You hang on hard and tight to the things that bring you joy because they can't take that shit from us at all. And this country's lost and half the people here, we're gonna have to, we gotta let them go. We gotta let them go. We will tolerate it. But we cannot let them ruin our existence. It's not going to happen. Period. So go vote. Go vote. Please. It's important. I'm, it's a beg. It's a beg. Please. Take your family. Take your friends. Tina has been doing the work. Not only staying at the polls and getting yelled at by, by lunatics, she's contacting families and friend, her family and friends, and she's doing the work. That's a hard thing to do because you, you could potentially risk something, but she's a kind and gentle and amazing person. And she's doing the work. If Tina can do it, anybody can do it. Yes. It's hard, it's hard to do. Just send a text, hi. Tina's cause, cause only because Tina's constantly worried. I am, right? she's, I am. She's, 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 she's I worried. Worry, worry. I am. You know, but if Tina can do it, y'all can do it. Yeah. Of course I don't do it. <laughs> I don't wanna get involved. Please, please just vote and just it like text, like we said earlier, like text your friends. Yeah contact people just you know your colleagues hey did you vote did you vote did you vote remind them yeah remind them because people forget they think oh i could early vote on monday no you can't you know like yeah remind them when early voting stops where you live remind remind them you know that they have to go to their actual precincts on uh, election day that it can't be any voting site you know all of those little things that people might forget yep all right. All right. Well, we will see you on the other side. Yes. This is coming out Monday, of course, the 4th. Um, possibly <laughs> the next episode will come out on November 13th. If anything changes, we'll put posts up on our yeah. our social media and we'll let you know. But um, forever grateful to be sitting here with yes. you, to be a part of this. Um, it's been the greatest joy of my life. It, and, it has uh, been mine too. It would be hard to walk away from, but oh. absolutely necessary for me to continue to exist. <laughs> okay. So we will see you next week. All right, and All right. it's and it's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I have faith. I have faith. Right. I do. I do. All right. All right. See you on the side. Bye. Bye.